Hello, I'm Sarah, otherwise known as Yarn Mugs on Instagram and Ravelry. Um, I'm going to try something different today. I'm going to film a sew along. Um, I'm making my birthday dress and I thought I'd show you how I get on and how I make a dress in a day. Um, now, I usually would film my podcast on um, an iPad, so for this I'm using my phone, so I just need to pre-warn you in case the sound is not as good or the, I don't know, it might just, I don't know, I've never done it before, so apart from when I've done Vlogmas or um, uh, Vlogtober, um, yeah, so we'll just see, see how it goes. So I thought I'd start off sharing you or showing you my setup. I'm in my conservatory where I tend to film my podcast. So this is the table I sit at. I've got my um, sewing machine and my overlocker. And then I'm going to just sort of talk to you about the patterns I'm going to be making. So I've made this spring dress lots of times. And I thought today I'll just do it a little bit different. I'm going to um, swap it round so that the bodice with this gap, I don't have it that low. I, I do it, I, I sew up much higher. It's too deep for me. But I'm going to have this as the back. Um, yeah, and then the, the front will be more um, yeah, completely sealed up. So I'm, yeah, I'm going to use the yellow fabric that I showed on my recent podcast and it's a cotton and then I've made some, I'm going to make some adjustments. So over here, I've just put here, I'm making the spring dress bodice, but with no opening at the front. I'm going to use the hinterland. I've used this pattern a few times as well. The hinterland skirt and the sleeve, but I've had to make the sleeve uh, much shorter so you can see the sleeve here um, I've just had to use this is the sleeve part um, because I didn't have much fabric so it's, it's a, a short sleeve um, I'm going to use this bias binding and I've got my fabric ready to make my own bias binding but again that tie will be at the back I didn't have enough uh, fabric for any pockets I'm not going to put bus darts in. I think the last um, couple of spring dresses I've made, I've avoided the bus darts just to give me a bit of a, a looser fit at the bodice. Um, and like I've said before, I'm going to do the back a bit like the front. So the opening and the bias ties will be at the front, um, at the back, <laughs> sorry. So yeah, this is the dress and uh, I've got all my bits and bobs that I need. Um, I've got my garden view. Let's see how we get on. So um, before I start, um, I always you know, make sure I've got all the equipment that I need. Um, I'm just matching the cotton thread with uh, the fabric just to make sure that, that that seems like a good match, which it does. Um, I've actually got a tiny bit on a bobbin, so I'm going to use that up first of all. Um, I'm quite a tidy sewer, so I have sort of everything in its place and I it sounds silly this is only an old old bowl that I use in the kitchen but every little snip of uh, cotton um, I put into there so yeah I try and be as, as tidy as I can let me just put the I'm just going to thread my sewing machine um, yeah I've I love watching other people do sew alongs. Um, yes, yeah, so I just thought, oh, I wonder if that will be, wonder if that will be interesting to others. Now I have got a machine that can thread its own needle, but um, I just like to do things myself. But it's not always, <laughs> it's not always easy. Um, and I sometimes think, I'm sure if I learned how to do it, it would be really quick and easy, but. I just always feel a little bit like, no, I just want to do it myself. Get the light on so I can see a bit better. Um, I don't need glasses for close work, but like you say, threading a needle, that eye of the needle is so tiny, isn't it? But it's always satisfying when um, I've threaded it. And another thing that I tend to do um, 
is make sure that everything is is working well so once I've threaded this um, then I'll I'm going to run what am I doing okay so what I'm going to do is run my fabric through the sewing machine and through the overlocker just to make sure everything is working well so I might show you that now so yeah i'm just checking that the stitches look okay and that it's no puckering or so that all looks fine so now i'm going to take it to the overlocker and give that a go. And again, that looks, that looks good too. It's always reassuring that I don't have to re-thread the overlocker. They're all nice and neat. Perfect. Now onto the sewing. So one of the first things I tend to do when I start my pattern is sort of do some of the easy jobs. So I'm going to um, put my gathering stitches into my skirt. So I'm just gonna turn the stitch length to the biggest, which is at a four, make sure that I've got it on, um, it doesn't look like I'm on it, but I am on B and A, which is just the straight stitch. And then I'm going to run two rows of gathering stitches over the top of the skirt. Look at that lovely fabric. So here we go. the gathering stitches you um, leave a bit of a length and these are the strings that you can pull on to create the gathers so I tend to hold my presser foot or or the fabric actually as close to the, the side of the presser foot so and then the next row of stitches I tend to um, just do it a tiny bit beyond this first row. And then when I do attach my skirt, then I, I, I want all those gathering stitches not visible so I don't have to pluck them all out. So I'm gonna line up my row of stitches with the edge of the presser foot. Or maybe a bit closer. Yeah, it's just making sure that two rows are very close to each other. Right, I won't film this bit, but I'll come back to you later. So you can see here, I've done my two, two rows of uh, gathering stitches. And I, I tried to, when you think of um, seam allowance, when I'm gonna attach it to the bodice, it's just over one centimeter. So if I was gonna do a one and a half centimeter seam allowance when I do attach, then those gathering stitches will be hidden. Um, so yeah, that's one. I've just run out of that tiny bit of thread, so I'm going to rewind my bobbin and do the second, the, the second piece of the skirt. So one's the front and one is the back. thing I thought I would do before I get onto the bodice is making the bias binding um, and I just have um, the pattern is just you, you cut several strips and you, you make your bias binding up so you have to place 
right sides together at a right angle. So one at the top and one down. And then you have to sew a diagonal line. I don't know if I'm showing you very well. Maybe I'll turn it round. Yeah, you have one piece of fabric at the top and then right sides together, you place the other one going downwards and then you're going to sew a diagonal line from that corner to that corner so that when it's sewn and opens up, it's joined. And all of these strips of fabric have been cut on the bias, so they are, they are stretchy. I don't know if I can really show it with my... Yeah, there's definitely a stretch there. So I'll do that next. So I've done most of the bias binding, just got the last little bit to add. So just to show you, it's strips and then sewn on the right angle and then I've snipped the excess and I'll iron that out flat shortly. But you can see here, it really stretches. So I've made a long, long length of it. Just got one more bit to add. I'll just drop that. Ooh. I'll just show you again. So right sides together at the right angle. And I've been just using my little ruler and a, um, an iron off pen just to draw that little right angle, um, that triangle where I want to do my stitches. Now, I suppose in, in other pattern it will say about pinning it, but this cotton is so stable, it just you know sticks together. I don't, I don't tend to use a pin. So I'm just gonna, I don't know if you can really see that. I've just drawn those little dashes just to give me an idea of that angle of the, the stitching. It's so quick and easy. I have bought um, bias binding in the past, but it's really lovely when you can make it yourself and, and make it either with contrast fabric or matching fabric. So you can see here, I've got a really big, big triangle um, with the stitching. So I'm just gonna snip off some excess and just leave a little bit behind, which will be ironed, ironed out flat. And there's my bias binding. Now onto the bodice. So I've picked up my bodice piece and already realised I've made a mistake <laughs> in the cutting. So I said to you I was going to swap around the, um, the front and the back bodice. So this is my front and it says cut two. And you cut two because if you were to make it the traditional way, you have to make this opening. But because I wanted my front bodice just completely flat, oh, I should have cut it on the fold. <laughs> but I've cut, I've cut two. Uh, so I'm hoping it will be hidden. So what I need to do is join them right sides together. And I'm just going to have to sew. I'll do a very small seam allowance because I don't really want to lose much of the that front fabric just to join the two front bodices together. I'm not going to be doing any um, bus darts. So it's just to join it so it's a, a, a flat bodice with no, no opening. And you can see here, there's a little, um, you know, a scoop of the neck. So I'm hoping that will be okay. This is the thing when you, um, oh, look at my hair. Sorry. I'm feeling a bit rubbish today. You know, and you sort of, I'll try not to go on about it too much, but yeah, I'm just feeling a bit old and haggard. And always feel like I look a bit of a mess, <laughs> even though I've just had a shower and dried my hair, but I've just got such silly fine hair. I, I don't really know what to do with that bit. Anyway, sorry about that. This is about sewing, not about what I look like. Um, yeah, so I often do that. I sort of, you know, take bits of other patterns and, you know, match them with others. And it's all a bit of trial and error, but um, I hope it will work out in the end. So I'm just gonna join this bodice and I'll, I'll open it up when that's finished to show you. Okay, so I've 
done a one centimeter seam allowance and in a moment I'm going to overlock this edge so it's a nice neat edge that doesn't fray and let's just open it up to show you I'm really annoyed at myself that I didn't do it on the fold because there is a little bit of a non-matching now now I'm realizing this is this is wrong straight away because look how high up it is on my neck right I think I'm going to unpin that and I think I'm going to make an adjustment to this neck neckline oh why didn't I so or oh, cut that on the fold so if you can see here, this is what's meant to be the back piece, really. No, it's not. It's the front piece, but it would normally have a slit here for that opening. So I think I'm just going to have to, you know, just cut a bit of a semicircle out to make that. Oh, what do I do? I think I'll just do that. Let me fold it together, right sides together. And I think I might just marry it up with another pattern I've got just to get that kind of scoop neck mm. yeah I think I'll do that I'll be back in a bit okay so I've laid this on another pattern piece I've got for a different pattern with a bit more of a scoop neck and you can see where I've done the red dashes I'm going to cut that bit out and that will hopefully give me not such a I open it up like this Mm. I'm hoping that'll be all right. I'm just gonna, before I cut, I'm just gonna do it again, just to check. So I definitely need a bit more of a scoop, otherwise it's gonna be... I do like my bodice to be, you know, I don't want it to be right up at my neck, but I, you know... Um... Yeah, I might just extend. <laughs> Oh, already trials and errors. Yeah, extend that line out a bit wider because otherwise it might still be a bit tight. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, so what I've done, I've taken um, a bit of a scoop from that original, that's my original pattern. If I place it next to it, you can see the, see the difference. So that's what I had originally, and then I've now cut that mat out to give me a bit more of a scoop. So let's open it to show you. Um, that's much better, isn't it? Now remembering that I've still got to join this to shoulders at the back, I've still got to add bias binding, which I, I will probably be visible I think I probably could take out a bit more because it's quite high up on my neck, but it's getting there. I think just a little bit more, that that bit there seems so, no, I think maybe a bit more, a bit more of a scoop. We'll get there. Okay, so I've just been taking out a sort of a centimeter at a time and then, and then just checking there's not much measurement going on. I'm just by eye work, you know, just cutting a nice, a nice scoop. So don't do as I do. <laughs> but um, this is the thing with, you know, making it up as you go along a little bit. That's a bit better. It's always strange when you have the pattern pieces and you think, oh my goodness, this is not gonna fit me. And I'm thinking already, I've already lost a centimetre by joining them bits together, but we'll see. What do you think? I think that that scoop looks a bit a bit better. Does it need to be a little bit more? So remembering this is the front bodice. This is the original, what would have been the bodice, but it would have been slit to here and would have opened up. So I think maybe I probably could just take it a little bit more, just a bit more deeper. I don't want to lose too much off the shoulder pieces though, but I might just have to, yeah, go parallel with that and then just cut a bit of a deeper bit here. 
Okay, it's back to the drawing board. Right, I think I've got it. I think this is it. Um, so let's open it up again. So you can see that's a bit more of a nicer scoop. It's still fairly high, not, not too high. I'm going to go with that. I'm happy with that. And then what I will do, I'm going to draw a little dotted line on the pattern piece. So for future reference, if I was going to do this again, you know, have the front piece not slit open, they can see, I can, well, I can see where I need to make that scoop. So yeah, I'm just going to, again, just, you know, draw this different line. So I've got one pattern piece, but for do two different looks, I'll do that now. now. Another thing I need to do on the neckline is to put some stay stitches in. And even though this fabric is fairly stable, I have had that in the past with other fabrics that have stretched out. So I'm just going to put um, a row of looser stitches just to keep that a bit more stable. And I tend to go from the center of the bodice out to the edge and just fairly close to the, the edge of the, the fabric. So it all, again, will be invisible. And just to, to show you that marking, I drew the scoop. So you can see how much I took out. It's quite a lot, isn't it? But that previous one was just not, not right. Okay, so I'll just do the stay stitching on the, on the other half of the bodice and then I'll be back soon. Okay, so I've done the front bodice. Um, I'm hoping that's gonna be okay. I've shown you it that way. I've um, overlocked that back seam and ironed it all flat and the stay stitching around the neck as well. So yeah, I just hope, I hope that's okay. Despite the seam and the non-pattern matching. But I'm gonna go with it. I'm quite laid back about sewing as well. I just, you know, excuse the train. <laughs> so now the back bodice, which is gonna have what looked like the front bodice with I need there to be a bit of a split so that the, I've got like a kind of keyhole at the background. Now, again, I've cut this out wrong because it, I cut it originally as on the fold. So it's like the opposite way round. So what I'm going to do, because normally if it's two pieces, you sew so far up till your gap. So I think what I'm gonna do here is cut to the gap that I want and I have already marked it. So you can see, um, Oh no, I think what I've done, I've measured it against where the front gap should be on the front bodice. The original version is about down here, so I really do, yeah, halve it. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut down that fabric to that point, mark it on my fabric so I know where I am, and then um, carry on with the pattern. <laughs> oh, it sounds a little bit haphazard, but I, I, there's a method in my madness. I think I, know, I think I know what I'm doing. It's just because I've, mixed it round the back and the front the, the other way round. Fingers crossed it will all work out. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that bit to provide that opening. Okay so I cut down to that little notch that I wanted and then I've had to turn it over a tiny bit and then turn it over again. So you've got a bit of a seam there and I'm just going to now sew around that little folded edge. Oh, so you can see if it was the front bodice, that's what it would be like. You'd you'd have that opening. Okay, so let's get back to the sewing.
I've sewn those tiny little seams over. And you can see it's got a nice neat edge, but again, that will be covered again with the bit of bias binding as well. So um, yeah, I'm pleased so far. I think what I'm gonna do now is have, um, have a little cup of tea. I'm doubting myself that I'm doing this wrong, but I, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. It's just because it's back, to, you know, I'm doing it back to front. I hope this is interesting. I suppose that's the thing, isn't it? Sometimes you don't always see um, things in the making. You know, you see bits and bobs of me making things and then things being finished. But it's sometimes quite nice to see, and I'm not thinking of this as being negative, but you know, just the problems that you come across the way and how, how you solve them. So yeah, it will all come together soon. So nearly there. Now I'm going to have to do a bit more bodging, I'm going to call it, but it's just about adapting that pattern. So you can see here, if I join my shoulder seams together, I've got all of this excess fabric here. So what I'm going to do is cut off so that the shoulder seams do match and then this is going to be the scoop of the back. So it's just a matter of, yeah, evening it out. And again, you know, I suppose this is what happens when you're adapting patterns or you're creating patterns. You know, you have a kind of starting point and then you, you change. But that looks much better, doesn't it? You can see, you see the outline of the, the front and this is the, the back. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just trim those bits of fabric off and then I'm going to sew my shoulder seams together and also I'm gonna sew the um, side seams together. And then we almost have a finished bodice apart from the edges for the bias binding and the sleeves. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm now going to prepare my bias binding. Um, and first of all, I just have to turn over this end a little bit and then turn in the long edges. So I'm just going to do that. So I think, let's see if I can get you. So this just has to be, I mean, it always has a measurement. It says here a quarter of an inch. So. I don't always measure, I'm just going to turn it over a little bit. And just iron that down. Or press. And then I'll do the other end. And then we'll do the long edges one centimeter down each edge. Okay. That's about. I think it ends up being into the into the center. And just I'll just work my way along and I'll do that on both both edges. I've prepared my um, bias binding you, you might not be able to see very clearly but I've I've sort of got two iron marks um, and I'm now going to attach the binding so you have the right side of the binding to the wrong side of the bodice and I'm starting from the center front and I'm going to be working my way all the way round, including um, this bit here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pin that and show you after.
So I'm now going to begin to sew the binding to the bodice. hot it's getting a bit hot in here it's about half past 12 now and i've just done a really fiddly bit i tried to video it and i realized i'd press slow motion and i thought oh, you don't want to watch it. watch it in slow motion so what i've done i've attached the bias binding so it's all been folded in on itself so there's no raw edges showing there's a little tie at the end and then you'll have a bit of bias binding visible on the outside and on the inside so it's all neat so I've now got to sew that. That was quite fiddly. Um, it's just really making sure that you've got those in the raw edges enclosed. So I'm just gonna do a bit of a real slow, slow sewing to get that all nice and neat. I didn't have my cup of tea earlier. I know I said I was gonna have a cup of tea and I didn't, I just carried on. So I'm feeling, I've not had breakfast either, so I'm feeling peckish. Um, but yeah, I just need to really carefully sew this. I'm just looking at the instructions. So I've got to start at the center front. Um, yeah, so it sort of wants you to do it in two halves. So starting here, all the way to one end of the tie and there, one end of the tie. I wonder if it's doing that because they worry about you stretching the fabric. But I don't think I'll do that. I think I'm going to do it all in one go. And I'm going to start at one end and work my way along. Hopefully that's not the wrong thing to do. I know it says not to do that, but I just don't want to have too, too lots of stitching. Anyway, I'm going to do that now. So I've attached my bias binding and there are some areas where I can still see, maybe it's on the other side, I was a little bit here, I can still see a bit of the um, stay stitching so I'm just going to unpick those visible stitches and just sort of hold it up so you can have a look. So you can see really lovely, neat binding there. And then at the back, you've got your leftover binding to create your little tie. And I'd already obviously seamed that double, um, turned it over double. So yeah, oh, I feel like I've, it's taken me a while. You know, I've been doing this probably since about half nine, half ten, half nine, so I've done about three hours, but it has been a bit of, um, it's taken me longer because I'm videoing, but also I've made some adjustments. Yeah, I hope, I hope it's all right. So I'm definitely, we're definitely gonna stop for a break and then it will just be a matter of attaching it to the skirt, which is a lovely job, and um, attaching the sleeves. Fingers crossed it fits. Okay, see you after lunch. Right, I'm back from my lunch. Had a nice cup of tea and biscuit and I've just done some preparing for the next bit of the sewing. So I have pulled on the gathering strings or the threads rather on the gathering stitches and sort of drawn the skirt in front and back and I've now clipped them together because I just need to join them to make a whole circle and I just then need to make sure that that skirt circumference fits in inside the bodice. The other thing I've done is um, I've sewn again two rows of gathering stitches for the sleeve cap 
and then again I'll pull them in into a little gather to fit um, inside here. So that's what's happening next. In fact, I might just sew, I'm gonna sew these together to create the, you know, the whole, whole sleeve. And often what I do as well is um, do the hem at the same time. So I, I've, I'll sew the seam, turn up the hem, pull the gathered strings and insert it. So I'm gonna do that now. Um, yeah, nearly there. So I'm just pulling on these um, strings for the gathering stitches for the sleeve head. So it matches up with the sleeve hole. And what I really like to do is have all those gathers kind of at the, the top of the sleeve. So it gives that kind of pretty, um, yeah, pretty sleeve head. And then you're just trying to marry it up with the, the hole um, on the bodice for the sleeve just to get it to, to fit. And once it does fit, then I'll clip it all in just to show you the other side so you can check that it's, you can see there's the sleeve and that's where we'll have a little, little bit of gathering there. So I'll just fiddle around with this a little bit more till this fits nicely and then I'll sew that all the way around the edge. So I finished the bodice and thought I'd try it on. Now it does feel a bit tight across the bust, but um, sometimes when you attach the skirt, you know, it seems to sort of, I don't know, changes things. So this is not necessarily what it might look. It might look a bit different once the skirt is attached, but I just thought I'd show you so far. So you see what I mean? It just feels there's not much give, and it could be because I've lost that extra centimetre there. Now, the, it's, it's shorter, it's literally just under my bust and really I, I want a bodice to be a bit longer than that. Um, not too far off, but um, it's, it's definitely at my kind of smallest part of the body. So when I put the skirt on, that should look nice. But the sleeves have fitted in lovely. And I'll just sort of show you the back. So that's nice. I think this is perfect, exactly how I would like it really. I didn't want it too low, not too high. So I've just got to add the skirt and I'll show you the finished product then. Um, but yeah, I just wish it wasn't so tight. Um, oh, not much I can do about that. Unless I lift, could be the, oh, I don't know if that's any better lifting my bra up a bit, but. I do feel like they're being a bit squashed. But yeah, the sleeves are nice. I'm pleased with that. So, see you when I've attached the skirt. Right, so I've got my bodice, the right side out, and then I've got my skirt inside out. And then I'm gonna place the bodice inside the whole of the skirt and then try and get all the gathers and make it all all fit. I might just put the camera down to show you. Let me just turn you around a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to place this so there will be right sides together when they're inside. And then I tend to, well, what I need to do is match up First of all, the side seam of the bodice with the side seam of the skirt. 
Oh, actually, look, I just realised I haven't sewn my skirt up. I'm going to do that now. Let me go and sew, sew that right. up. So the side seams of the skirt are sewn up and I'm now popping the bodice inside the skirt hole, matching up the raw edges. And I tend to, like you say, start off with a um, the seam of the bodice, match it up with the seam of the skirt and do that both sides. And I really love, that I've only recently started using these um, clips. I'll just show you. Yeah, so I'm, re I'm really liking these rather than pins. It's just a really quick, quick way of getting things attached. So I'm just gonna turn it around. So there's loads of strings everywhere because again, I don't know if I need to gather it in a bit more. But so I'll leave them there till the last, till the last moment. And again, I'm just matching up my side seam of the skirt. the side seam of the bodice. And then I kind of hold hold it like that to see if, if it looks like it's going to fit. I'm gonna try and get the center of the bodice with the center of the skirt at the front and also do the same at the back. And then you can kind of even out your gathers so you get it to fit. I've got quite a good eye. Like I tend to know before I fit it, before I put it into the skirt that it's, it's fairly close. And I think it is, it's not really does fit. So I'm just gonna go round now and put all my clips on. Here's the finished dress. I just thought I'd talk a little bit about it indoors. So since I've attached the skirt, again, it has just sort of brought that bodice down a bit, but it is still a bit tight there. But it feels fine everywhere else. It feels fine on the arms. Um, I'm just a bit conscious that it's just a bit tight. And if, that, if I'd had more fabric, I could have made that just a little bit lower so that my waist was a bit lower. Um, I didn't have enough fabric to put any pockets in it, so I'm constantly wanting to put my hand in there. But And being cotton poplin, it's quite stiff, so it, it, um, it's not static or anything, but it just um, sticks out a little bit. But overall, I'm quite happy. I'm happy with, with that. Um, I'll just show you the back again. I'm happy with all the, the kind of gathering, it's all nice and even. So all I need to do now is overlock the side seams, overlock this bit as well, that'll make that a bit flatter, and, and hem it, but it's literally probably near enough where it's gonna be. It's just, um, if I turn you around a bit, it's gonna be just below, excuse my socks, just below my knee, maybe. So I'm only gonna, I think I'm probably gonna overlock that hem and then just turn it up once. Right, I'll finish off, see you soon. Okay, so I just thought I'd show you the inside so you can see all of the neatness of it all. Um, I've overlocked all the seams, so that includes the the arm seam, that waist, the side seam 
and I've also overlocked the bottom and then just turned it over once and that's been hemmed as well. I did have an issue, I did, I was on, had one sleeve to go and then the overlock I needed re-threading, that took me ages. Um, but yeah, it's just nice, I, that's the amazing thing about an overlocker, it just neatens everything up so you don't get any fraying. So yeah, I'm really, I'm really pleased. Well, I'm saying really pleased, but I wish it was just a little bit, a little bit looser around the bust. But if it's if it's everywhere else, and I'm sure, like I say, I, I'm always just a bit self-conscious when things are fitted. So it probably it fits, but <laughs> I just would rather it be, be a bit looser. But yeah, tell me what you think. What um, what do you think of it? I mean, I'm I'm really happy with um the style of it. I mean, this is just my perfect you know kind of this is what nearly all my dresses are like on a variation um I'm, I'm really pleased with that tie at the back and i'm hoping you could see that when i was showing the you know little video of me the tie is quite short so i don't know where, again where i must have run out of of fabric and i didn't have enough to make the bias binding a bit longer so it is quite a small bow but you know that's that's all right isn't it um at one point I did try the dress on back to front just to see if it'd be better with that at the front but then it was all wrong because it was up high as if it was a back. Um, yeah, I'm, lo I'm loving the fabric. Um, and uh, thank you for coming along with me while I did this. Look at the state of me, see what I mean? Do it look like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards. Anyway, yeah, thanks for coming along and watching me sew for the day. Um, I hope um, it doesn't come across being a bit too chaotic. I think there is always a fear of people making their own clothes and you know things having to be perfect. But you can muddle through. You know, it's not it's not difficult stuff. Um, and I'm always really inspired when I watch sew alongs just to you know the fact I've managed to get a dress made in a, in a day. You know, it's. I remember last year, my last birthday, I, I made my birthday dress on my birthday. I just had the morning. I made a very simple one without setting sleeves, but um, yeah, it's not it's not a difficult thing to do. So I'm gonna go ahead now and, or go away now and um, create this vlog and see if I can upload it and uh, yeah, see what you think. But if, if you think it's a good idea, I'll, I'll do more kind of sew-alongs and, and show you show you those kind of makings in progress or making in a day that tends to be what i do i tend to manage to get a, a dress made in a day um yeah i think i'm i think i'm all right with it um and i suppose that's you know i do like cotton but that is the issue sometimes with cotton that it is a bit stiff and who knows this could have been a you know a duvet cover or a tablecloth I didn't really have much fabric there wasn't even two meters of fabric and the fabric was very narrow so it wasn't very deep um, yeah hence why I didn't really have enough for um, yeah the pockets and stuff so yeah thanks thanks for a lovely day of sewing and um, yeah I hope you enjoyed it see you soon